Um, to start right off, I think, Trey, you're first up. Um, we want to do justice to some amazing uh, sponsors that have made this weekend possible. Will you tell us about them? Sure thing. So, uh, I want to really thank these guys for believing in you and believing in us and believing in this community. Source Toad uh, gave us a great sponsorship that helped make this event possible. Source Toad is an outstanding resource, an outstanding company in the area. If you need development done for a website or application, you need to go to Source Toad because they are one of our fastest growing companies and a pleasure to work with. Uh, do you have a clicker? Are you going to guide me through this? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> so we have Phonism and Tampa Coffee Club. Uh, Phonism works out of the Wave. It's a uh, telecom software. Awesome guy. Steve is the is the owner. We're good friends. He's friends of us, friends of the community. Tampa Coffee Club. Leon's one of our mentors. He did a TV spot with us. If you guys are interested in getting a subscription-based coffee sent to your house or to your company on a regular basis, if you like to try new things, hit up Leon. He's right there. Wave to the wave to the crowd, Leon. Um, next, please. We have Cigar City, who's going to be hosting our after party. They're going to be providing a bunch of booze, a lot of uh, samplings for cider and mead. Um, we also have ECC, the place you're at right now, who provided us this awesome space for free. They were so gracious, so easy to work with, so supportive. They're an awesome resource for anybody in this community to come and learn and grow and make the connections that you need to succeed as an entrepreneur. We also have Pepin. Oyton was one of our uh, one of our mentors. He's done a lot of great work for branding for different beers and different logos and different uh, different really powerful beverages. And he was a great resource to all of you. And Pepin is also supplying a, a prize package. So some of our winners are going to get to pitch their idea to Pepin potentially for a deal. They're going to get to learn more about Pepin and get mentor mentorship directly from a lot of uh, really influential people there. So it could be a great resource for all of you. Uh, we also have Creative Loafing, who agreed to uh, work with us to help market this event, to get to you people, to bring you in. So a big shout out to them. And we have the Tampa Bay Wave. Mark Carpenter is here from the Tampa Bay Wave. Wave. <laughs> the Wave is an awesome co-working space in downtown. Uh, they're going to be providing co-working space to our winners, so you can make it your home to launch your business and get the resources and the people around you that you need. Uh, we also have H.S. Stephen Lee, the law offices of, they are going to provide free legal work to our winners as well. So if you need to work, worry about IP, or you need help registering your business, or you need advice as to how to make this business legal if you're trying to sell something that you're selling for people to ingest, that's probably pretty important that you go through the proper procedure to make sure that you're not going to get sued, and they're going to offer you those services for free. So big shout out to them. And then Blind Tiger has been fueling us with our needed caffeine all weekend. Roberto is here as well, so thank you. We have Leanne's Cheesecakes, who uh, filled us with delicious treats on Saturday, and I missed out on it, sadly, but I heard really good things. They were amazing. Uh, <laughs> don't rub it in. Uh, let's see here. All right, we have our lovely photographer. Do you want to, where, where's he at? There he is. <laughs> if you need any photography done, He'll be at the snack table. <laughs> and then we also have Standard Spoon, wherever they're supplying this lovely wingman cocktail spoon to one of our winners. So I believe that's all of our sponsors, is that correct? Ooh, yes, sponsors! Woo! Thank you, um, And uh, I just want to emphasize that without these sponsors, this event would truly not be possible. And they do this because they believe in the community in Tampa here. They believe in you as entrepreneurs, and they want to support that. Now, uh, I meant to emotionally prepare you for this, judges. I'm springing this on you now, but will you introduce yourselves to the group? Um, as you know, I'm a guest here in Tampa. I arrived a couple nights ago, and I don't know any of you well. So for me to study your LinkedIn profiles and try to do that might be kind of clumsy. So can I give the mic to you, and we'll just pass it down the row and give you some FaceTime with them? You know, just 20, 30 seconds. Tell us your involvement in the entrepreneurial community and, and kind of how we should connect with you or what brings you here. Anything you want to say or Hi there. I'm Jared Rodriguez. I'm the CTO and founder of Kitesk. Uh, we do software for salespeople. Um, connected into the Tampa Bay startup community, I've done uh, multiple three or four startups here. Um, some very successful, some eh. <laughs> That's the nature of doing startups is success and failure. Um, and I'm here today to help out Trey, who's uh, one of my coworkers at Kitesk, 
and very interesting that we worked with Tampa Bay Wave in the past. They provided us actually our first spot uh, where we started the company was right at Tampa Bay Wave. Yep. And on that note, I'll hand it off to Tampa Bay Wave. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Mark from the Tampa Bay Wave. Um, Trey explained this a little bit, but basically we have a co-working space, we have an accelerator program, we do workshops, but they're all very focused towards entrepreneurship, especially tech entrepreneurs. We're very community facing, we're very involved in most of these style events. Uh, so you can usually see us at the different ones, especially Gracie over here. Say hi, Gracie. <laughs> yeah, that's my spiel. <laughs> Roberto Torres. Oh. <clears throat> hello, hello. I don't know how to project my voice. <laughs> my name is Roberto Torres, and I'm the president for Black and Denim and Blind Tire Cafe. Um, Check. All right. So we're a local coffee roaster uh, based out of Tampa. We started November 2014. We have two cafes, and we're working on two more locations. Uh, <laughs> Um, my name is Kelly, and I'm one of the, I'm the founder of Squeeze Juice Box. We have three locations, two in St. Pete, one in South Tampa, and I feel like we are a part of the entrepreneurial um, community because some people have called our shops incubators. We take on a lot, almost all of the local products, and grow them within our stores. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's talk a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> the illustrious Jerry Redner took his family to Disneyland and left his cell phone on the monorail and just got it back and he's in route. So he might make it here in time for the, the deliberations, but he'll be here to do mentorship for each and every one of you. So there's a heads up about what happened there. You mean Disney World? Disney. No, Disney World for sure. Disney, yeah, Disneyland's where I'm from. I don't really like Disneyland. So. so let's talk a bit about what these judges are going to be thinking about tonight as they listen to these presentations. Now, the attendees this weekend are all intimately familiar with the judging criteria. So I'm going to review this quickly for the sake of the ten of you who are just guests tonight. There are three main buckets of criteria that they're going to consider. The first is validation, and then execution and design, and then a business model. Validation has to do with how well these teams tested their assumptions and investigated the real needs of their potential customers to make sure that what they're building is something that people actually want, something that people value enough to pay enough that they can continue sustainably make it. Um, so they went out and did exercises. They went out and interviewed people on the street, face to face, and that can be a lot more awkward than it sounds. Sometimes it's very uh, difficult and, and frustrating, especially in the humid heat, to be out there for hours, dehydrating yourself, beating the streets, and, and I, saw, I, I ran into some of them on the street as they were struggling through it, and gosh, I gotta tell you, I was so proud of them. They were doing it and got some awesome feedback, and it significantly influenced the products that they developed. And so part of the Startup Weekend is learning how to do that, getting good at testing your assumptions. So the second bucket is execution and design. And this has to do with how well they worked as a team, how well they designed their product. Design really matters. And uh, some of the teams uh, may, may prototype a product during a Startup Weekend. Other teams may have something so complex that it's all they can do just to design the product. But showing a high degree of empathy for their users and designing something that is intuitive and easy to use is extremely important. So the judges will be looking for that. And the third is the business model. Um, this has to do with how they differentiate from their competitors, maybe what their cost structure is of a good that they're producing, like a physical good to sell. Do they understand distribution channels and partnerships and growth strategies and how they'll launch and go into market, all of that business model stuff. Um, so those are the three main criteria. This weekend we have a fourth bucket which is, does this pertain to the beverage industry? Obviously. Um, do they understand how to build partnerships and what the channels are in the beverage industry? Um, and how their unique identity uh, compares to the other players in their space? So those are the judging criteria. And now let's talk about how pitching works. Um, pitching is very fast. This is kind of like Shark Tank, but even faster. You have five minutes. Each team has five minutes to show us the sum total of everything they've done in the last two and a half days. That's very difficult. And so that has been their challenge mostly today is, 
is uh, compacting everything they've learned in the last 54 hours into this presentation. Um, after that five minutes, the esteemed judging panel has three minutes to ask them questions. This is going to happen very rapidly. Five minutes, three minutes, five minutes, three minutes, teams back to back. When one team is doing Q&A up here with the judges, the next team will meet me in the corner up here, and toward the end of that Q&A period, we'll be sneaking on stage, so don't mind us, don't be distracted. We're going to come back here and switch out the technology and get the next presentation ready to go. Um, I am going to announce the order of the presentations as we go just to make it extra fun and intense for you guys. How's that? Woo, so that basically sucks. means you're going to find out about three minutes before it's your turn to pitch. All right? OK. Also, I'm, uh, it's just fun for me. That's all it is. <laughs> OK, so. Um, and now I'm free. Where's Danny? Yes. Who's first? Oh, um, it's uh, Smiley. Smiley's up first. <laughs> Smiley, Smiley. Go ahead and come on down, and we'll have a little awkward silence. Oh, there's that. As you guys get plugged in, the picture me, please. That's just this USB thing. Okay. I just realized I have neglected one thing. We don't have a timer set up here. Judy, can I have Trey sit where you are now? So one other aspect of this is we have a timer so that the teams can see exactly how much time they have left. This will be a five minute timer. It's going to be on this desk right here, front and center. Trey is going to man it. When that timer gets down to 60 seconds, Trey, you will hear a warning sound at 60 seconds. Don't be alarmed. That means you have a minute left. Um, that's just to help you stay on track in case you forget to keep an eye on the timer. When we switch to the Q&A, Trey's going to have a second tab open that's ready to go with a three-minute timer. When the three minutes gets down to 30 seconds, you'll hear the alert sound again. I use 30 seconds because that tends to be the amount of time uh, that gives you uh, enough time for one more question. If it's a good, solid question. Um, if they're really fast questions, maybe two more. But um, I think if you kind of look sideways, judges, you and the team will both be able to see how much time is left during Q&A if that's stationed right there. Smiley shines. Your tech appears ready to go. You look at ease. Happy. Shiny. It's not my first word. Smiley. He's a pro. So. Trade volume check. You got that up? Working on it. Sorry, I'm just throwing this at you last minute. You would forget something. You want to go back here? All right. So with five minutes on the clock. Oh, there's one last thing I should address. Roberto just experienced it. So Mike has a short. I'm going to suggest that if the mic stops working as it did a few minutes ago, I'll be fine you just holler. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Take it away. Hello, I'm Scott Gonzalez for Smiley Shines. Before we get started, I just want to share a few fun facts about moonshine. Number one, why do they call it moonshine? It's because they used to have to make it under the light of the moon. They had to do that not during the day because it was illegal to make it during the day. Um, moonshine's a corn-based whiskey. Uh, another fun fact, people associate it with those big ceramic jugs with three X's on them. What do the three X's mean? Well, it used to have to be distilled three times, so they'd mark an X on the jug each time they ran it through the still. Uh, so we are Smiley Shines, and our problem as we see it is that not enough people love moonshine as much as Smiley does. Uh, uh, he loves it because it embodies his spirit, uh, creative, uh, creativity, passion, spunk, and fire. He loves the excitement and rebelliousness and uh, the communal aspect and the nostalgia. Um, Smiley has 20 years experience in manufacturing, uh, 15 of which have been in operations. He's a Six Sigma green belt. He's been preparing alcoholic recipes and concoctions for uh, six years. Um, what he's making is not your grandfather's moonshine, but it will take you to another time and place. 
And what we seek to do is take advantage of millennials and other niche groups who are embracing the past and seeking unique beverage experiences. So we took our initial offering and uh, a small batch moonshines in various flavors, and we surveyed a decent segment of our potential customers, consumers, package stores, and establishments. Um, of the consumers, the largest segment um, told us that they only buy spirits like three to four times per year. And of establishments, uh, they, they told us that um, their most popular uh, uh, spirits are either bourbon or whiskey. And that matched up with what the consumers were telling us, and that was that of those that wanted to try moonshine, they also had five favorable impressions of both bourbon and whiskey. Um, in our third party research, um, we're inspired by moonshine sales, which have increased 150% from 2012 to 2015. And in the moonshine space, two of our potential peers, uh, Midnight Moon and Old Smoky, are uh, currently capitalizing on this short-term growth. Uh, we also are taking stock in the craft beer industry, uh, where approximately 15 to 25 percent of total sales are of the seasonal variety. And taking another lesson from Starbucks, uh, the National Product Diary finds that um, seasonal beverages um, are encouraging additional purchases. Um, they lure in new customers. Seasonal beverages attract customers from other competitors, and they also stimulate new business during slow periods. And taking what we've learned, we intend to produce a small batch moonshine uh, in flavors specific to and limited to seasons and holidays. Uh, we want to sell it through local package stores, bars, and restaurants. Um, over half of the people we talked to this weekend told us that we could contact them when we had a product that we were ready to sell. And one better than that, Smiley actually secured a letter of intent with Corrigan's Pub in St. Petersburg. He also uh, managed to secure a pre-order with an individual who was interested in buying two bottles of moonshine. Now, uh, we want what we want is to pursue a partnership with an established distiller um, so that we can operate under their regulatory umbrella and take advantage of uh, their manufacturing resources and potentially share uh, distribution costs. Uh, that's what we'd like to do. I'd like to introduce you to our team. I'm Scott Gonzalez. I'm an analyst at a local nonprofit. Uh, we've got uh, Gianna. She's a, an associate marketing manager at a startup focusing on real estate and banking. Uh, Anthony is a technology expert, and our founder and the force behind this venture is smiling. He'll be taking your questions. Thank you. All right, excellent. Now, while the judges ask them questions, I'd like Team TV to meet me up here in the corner. You'll be next. With three minutes on the clock, judges, I think because of the nature of the microphone, if I just keep it here and you holler your questions, maybe you can repeat them briefly and for the sake of the audience, maybe rather than passing the microphone around. Um, go ahead and dive right in. You have three minutes. Um, how, what's the total market size of the year? Total market size right now, uh, as of the end of 2000, uh, as of the end of last year, our two main competitors was about 600,000 cases. If that's the two main competitors, do you know the total market size? Do not. Okay. Yeah, can you explain again how you're selling it, like through what channels? Through what channels? So ultimately, uh, the purpose is to uh, have a rotating stock that's based off of seasons and uh, holidays, and the channels that we're planning on using are gonna be basically uh, packaged goods stores, uh, bars, and uh, establishments. Online, right? that, is, uh, that is something that we're entertaining right now. Uh, well, actually, uh, through our discovery, one of the things uh, I learned is uh, Florida happens to be one of those states uh, that's very difficult to uh, ship alcohol. Uh, so ultimately right now, uh, we have that opportunity uh, if we want to take it out of state. Uh, there are some competitors that do uh, online sales. At this particular moment in time, we have not really uh, gone that far as far as entertaining that. 
We actually have reached out uh, based on the weekend. Uh, we haven't received a response yet, uh, so I'm hoping that uh, sometime next week I can follow up with that. Mm -hmm. uh, just out of curiosity, why are you going for millennials? Ultimately, uh, our target market right now seems to be in the uh, mid 20s to the mid 30s. Uh, I'm, we're trying to stay away from uh, the just turned 21 age, uh, and ultimately, uh, when we seem to get around the 40, uh, that demand seems to die down. Uh, we're kind of catering more towards the craft, so kind of like a craft moonshine, uh, and that tends to be uh, more towards your early 30s. If I'm a distillery, why do you think I would want to take you to do a private label or your private label moonshine? What's, what's going to be your pitch to me? My pitch to you is uh, one, uh, help you with your operating costs uh, based off of uh, our, our input, or rather our, uh, our business. And hopefully, uh, also the same thing with distribution, uh, shared distribution costs. And uh, it's really basically about it right now. How many people did you talk to this weekend? We talked to uh, just under, uh, basically just under 100. Just under 100? Yeah, and about 15% uh, about uh, was uh, establishments. And about the other uh, 85 was uh, consumer. Single. And what was your reception among establishments? Uh, the reception among establishments, I believe, was somewhere right around uh, uh, third to 50% uh, uh, of the establishments were in favor. Uh, the rest were not carrying moonshine and really had no intent of doing so. Uh, based off of a couple of ones that were in, in Ebor, they really didn't want that in their market. Um, Next up, please welcome to the stage, TV, with five minutes on the clock, who's starting now? Okay, you've got the clicker, you've got the microphone. Judges, I'll wait for your nod, I see you madly scribbling notes. Looks generally good, okay. Next, you ready to go, timer's ready? Take it away. Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Asim Stevens, I am the founder behind Tampa Bay Tippy Company. Um, I grew up in the Virgin Islands, and growing up in the Virgin Islands, my family instilled in me a strong, strong values of healthy living and eating properly. Um, while I was an apprentice at a local farm in Naralacho County, um, I sorry, <laughs> I uh, learned about the multiple benefits of probiotic foods. Uh, one thing that stood out to me the most was how delicious this water kefir beverage is. Water kefir is a probiotic beverage fermented with uh, lacto, it's a lacto, lacto fermentation which produces a softer for, for version of what most people uh, familiar, familiarize with the taste of kombucha. Um, so the problem we faced was, you might ask sometimes, where do I find an all natural organic drink that provides more health benefits than other beverages currently available such as soda pops, traditional wines, etc. Tibi is a healthy alternative to traditional beverages, based on the multiple benefits that I've listed. Okay, hi. I'm going to be... Oh, vision, mission statement. Okay, Tampa Bay Tibi Company strives to be the first locally available healthy beverage alternative with broad public appeal um, in Pasadena. So, um, reiterate some of the things that Sina told you about Tibi. First of all, it's caffeine-free. We use cane sugar, not um, any other artificial sugars. There are no preservatives in it. There's an improved taste. There's no al uh, apple cider vinegar. It's a fresh product, and it's local and sustainable. Um, one of our competitors, direct competitor, is Kavita. It's sweetened with stevia. <coughs> it does contain apple cider vinegar, and it does contain preservatives to uh, extend the shelf life. Another competitor we have is kombucha. It's uh, uh, indirectly. It's a fermented tea. It also contains apple cider vinegar. It's caffeinated, and it, there's a two to four week brewing process for this. Okay, so this is sort of the market research that um, we came upon. So our target audience is a super user, and so we define super user as a consumer that spends 40% uh, more of their budget on health and wellness products. So that includes um, vitamins, um, weight management, um, locally produced foods and beverages, um, health conscious individuals. Okay, and they are, of the market share, they are 26% of the population, but uh, account for $161 billion annually of the $262 billion 
uh, fed food and beverage industry market sales. So. And as part of our market research, we went out to Whole Foods in Ybor City, City um, Saturday Market, and spoke with vendors and customers. Um, and learned that a lot of people have heard of kombucha, but they're really really inexperienced with kefir water. Um, they were excited to talk about it and learn about the differences between the two, and they were really excited to learn about the difference in the tastes. So what is our business model? Well, <coughs> sticking to the grassroots model, which I feel is just the way of the future, um, I'd like to promote this product mostly in farmers markets and local or s uh, community sustained, uh, supported uh, outlets such as small grocers, uh, squeeze juice works, etc. Um, uh, direct to consumer sales would look something like farmers market sales, business to business sales would be in the form of, like I said, small grocers and also we'd like to target um, having TV on tap at local establishments. So if you're interested in having a healthy alternative while your friends are drinking alcohol at the bar, something similar, please request TV at your favorite dive. Okay, there's a growing industry for fermented probiotic beverages. Um, our closest profile um, and indirect competitor is kombucha. So we did some research on their uh, past sales performance and projection growth. And so between 2013 and 2015, they actually, their sales jumped uh, five times and $600 million annually. So that's a growing industry that we want to break into. Um, our product is, we're, vir we're virtually just stepping into, um, we're infiltrating a market that kefir water currently doesn't exist. So we're really trying to capture that and um, just take that market share. Uh, just an in brief introduction of our team. My name is Asim Stevens, once again. We had Todd Whitesell, uh, Brianna Collins, and Michelle Burgess. Thank you so much, everyone. Awesome, wonderful job. So, with five seconds to spare, nicely done. Team New, meet me up in the corner here, will ya? Judges, you have three minutes to grill them. Do your worst. <laughs> so what kind of feedback did you get? You said you talked to Whole Foods and what kind of feedback did you get from that? Right. Um, like I said, a lot of people were not familiar with kefir water. They, um, the kombucha, they didn't like the taste, that, the vinegary taste that it left in their mouths. And so a lot of people were turned off by that and they said they wouldn't drink that product. Um, they were interested in a kefir water that didn't have that taste. Okay. One fish, don't we're aiming for a fresh product, as in no natural or artificial preservatives, aiming for faster shelf turnover. And due to the short fermentation process, which is only 24 hours, as opposed to kombucha's two to, two, two to four weeks, um, I really feel that it creates an opportunity to promote freshness on the shelf. And the shelf life is two to three weeks. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, can you tell me a little more about the types of validation you did? Was it just talking to like Whole Foods style stores? Or so we spoke to about 20 to 50 people at the Ybor City Market. Some of them were vendors, some of them were people between the ages of, I think our highest age was 57. Um, it was actually a guy who mentioned that he drinks probiotic beverages to get over, like post hangover. Um, so he, he was interested in that. Um, a lot of people had heard of kombucha and again mentioned um, some of the aftertaste they disliked. Um, even Kavita, one person mentioned the stevia, they didn't like the aftertaste. So what differentiates us, I think, with the kefir water is that um, it's, if you have any uh, allergies to sweeteners, it's organic cane sugar. And also there's less of that vinegary taste because it's a softer fermentation. Um, so 20 to 50 people and all of them had uh, barely heard of water kefir, which suggested to us that we could break into the market and maybe, you know, make it a competitor to kombucha, especially if they um, disliked or were not as familiar with it. What are you making? Water kefir is produced through a fermentation process. You introduce a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast, called, also known as a scoby, similar to the kombucha mother, um, to sugar water, basically, sorry, no problem. Basically, just uh, sugar water. Uh, you can use flavoring in the second fermentation process, but um, it's it's a soft fermentation. It takes 24 hours, and the finished product has a shelf life of two to three weeks. I like the idea, especially of 
working in bars because I personally don't drink beer at all and I love going to places with my friends and having a canooch on tap um, at the end of the night, kimchi food, maybe a hangover. I think that would be a good market that hasn't really been explored. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Did you talk to any bars or establishments like that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Excellent work. Great questions from the judges. And now, will you welcome to the stage Team New? Come on, give it up. With five minutes on the clock, we've lost presentation. <laughs> We have it. It's all good. Who wants this? All right. You ready? Judges, are you ready? Team New, take it away. Thank you, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Yuli. These are my teammates, Jay, Nick, and Joey. So, starting about five years ago, I started suffering from really bad chronic health issues all the time. And it affected everything that I did in my life. Everything, down from how I felt to my relationships with other people. No matter where I go, no matter what doctors I saw, no matter how many times I went onto WebMD, could not figure out what my specific problem was. So I kind of just gave up. Well, about a year ago, I discovered the power of juicing and it completely changed my life in every aspect. As I started juicing more and more, I started learning ways to gear my drink specifically towards my issues. So if that day I had a headache, or I had an eye ache, or my joints hurt, I had a juice for it. Well, as I'm sure you can imagine, Kelly, it is so much work and so time consuming to juice that I started buying my, shoe, buy my shoes, <laughs> buying my juice um, from our local markets. Well, as I kept shopping around, I was like, wow, I can't believe I'd never discovered this before. Why, why doesn't anybody know about this? But as I discovered even more, the, the problem is not the knowledge, the problem is the personalization. You're different from me, just as you're different from him, so why shouldn't your food be exactly the same way, specifically geared towards you? Hi everyone, my name is Jay. I'm actually Julie's uncle, so, Seeing that all the health issues that she was having, my brother, let me have you, oh, he's over there, okay, let me borrow this. So my brother, falling asleep on the wheel, miserable, no energy, moody, and I said, you know what, if this is working for her, it has to work for him. So we said, why don't we help him make something that's specifically to what he's needing or the problem he's having. This is actually him 30 days uh, before juicing. This is him 30 days after. And when I tell you he's never seen a gym, I don't think he knows what the inside of a gym looks like. <laughs> but this is the results. And this is why we decided if it's working for him, we have the responsibility to bring it in a bottle to our other friends and family. Okay? So, I'll pass it to Julie. So according to our market research, the juicing industry is a $2.3 billion industry just by itself, and it's been rapidly climbing at a 2.9% every single year. So obviously, this is already a viable idea. We're not reinventing the wheel. Well, we wanted to find a way to get this product to our customers in a simpler way. So the more we researched, we came across the juice or food truck industry. By itself, the food truck industry is $856.7 million has generated that much a year, and it has been growing rapidly at a 9.3% every year. So, this is where we come in. New You not only offers you a personalized beverage, geared specifically towards whatever need it is that you have, but we also bring it to you in a convenient way via a juice truck. And according to our market research, this, this is pretty much a new concept. While, while there are juice trucks or food trucks specifically for foods, there's not too much for juices, especially in the Tampa Bay area, and we wanted to be able to bring that to you guys. For just an investment of $100,000, we could have this going for you in a matter of weeks. So New You, New You is a juicing company that is as active as those who drink it, okay? So 
With that being said, this is again why we feel that if we are able, we don't have time. I'm always on the go. As entrepreneurs, I'm quite sure that all of you are always on the go. Some of us are parents, sons or daughters, whomever. We just don't have time. So if we can take all of the nutrients that we know we need to live a healthier lifestyle, to give us that energy that we need, imagine simply if it's in a bottle. And that's what New You brings to you. And this is actually why we decided to call our company New You, because the whole point of this is to never underestimate the uniqueness of you. Thank you, guys. Oh. <laughs> Before we leave, we'd like to introduce our teammates as well. We don't want to leave them behind. But we also brought some samples of our juices. We love it. Hopefully there's no, you guys are not allergic to anything, but we have some energy. We have some energy drinks. We have some drinks for, uh, for mood. Um, and we have some drinks for digestion as well. So we'd love if you can try it. We just want some feedback. And I will let you guys know too, the... the one in the green has nuts in it, so if any of you guys have a nut allergy, beware. Excellent work. Team Rico, join your team. Uh, and we're going to put three minutes on the clock. Uh, Stubble, please meet me up in the wing. And judges, you have three minutes to grill this team. Take it away. So, what kind of juicing are you going to do? Right now we're doing the typical, um, but we are planning on doing cold press just to keep, sorry, just to keep the juice, just to make the juice a little fresher. I believe cold press makes the juice a little bit fresher. And now you're saying that you're personalizing them, and how does that work? Well, for example, when you go to Jamba Juice, for example, say that you want to boost an energy. Well, they give you the the option of adding an energy boosting fruit to your drink. Same concept. We just previously do it for you and then tell you what that particular what those particular ingredients specifically work towards. And uh, have you worked this out as far as like we have certain set menus and seasonal menus based on pathologies, but we also have to do that to regulate cost and organic produce. So how will you keep all of that produce on hand in a truck in a variety? Very, very good question. And obviously, we are at our you know beginning stages, but we have been talking to different you know farmers and, and farmers markets because we do realize that you know certain vegetables are seasonal. So we want to make sure that we're not providing juices when it's, it's hard for us to, to get the product. So that's what we're doing. It. We're talking to different markets. We want to work with other small businesses because we want to help them out as well. And instead of basing our, our juices on seasonal juices, what we do is we have a base. So for example, you guys have a drink that's good for energy, a drink that's good for working out. We, we interviewed, these two gentlemen specifically, interviewed 20 to 30 people at two farmers markets yesterday. Um, just to see if they were, the food truck idea was viable. And also we asked about what were, everyday major chronic health issues that everyone went through. We came up with top five, but we have others as well. So versus, instead of doing it seasonally, we're doing it versus, or er, doing it geared towards a specific issue. So they have a base and they can add things. The only other things I think about, they all need something about the Department of Ag, they regulate all cold press, and they have been very restricting. We have already looked into food trucks, so you, you need keep researching that as well in finding a centralized um, warehouse and distribution for your produce because if you've got 46 pounds of fruit and veg we go through 300 pounds of kale in like a couple of weeks so you're going to have that on here you know? yeah yeah absolutely Sorry. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much yeah. thank you so much for that kelly because that's something that we've been 15 seconds is there anyone that has like soy or almond milk? Yeah. So soy or almond milk? No. It's the workout that has almond milk, uh, almond soy. milk. And, and what about the orange one? The, the orange one is carrots, um, golden beans. Excellent work, New You. Oh, we have a clicker here. Excellent. Great. Now, please welcome to the stage.